Michael was the chairman of Kostyamana in the years that was set up, Kostyamana Nagaliva, which was set up in 1965. And he was a West Board chairman and a vice chairman at county level as well. So he got the winning goal in atrocious conditions in the Pierce Stadium in 62. And it was the third meeting between the rivals that year. You had three Westport finals in a few weeks. The game was abandoned after 25 minutes in the first in the first meeting. The situation did not result from the aforementioned disputes. I had been on about the disputes in an earlier chapter, which were common at the time, but due to torrential rain on an August day in lovely Salt Hill. The conditions were supposed to be dreadful, and they were no better on the second day when they went in to play again. The teams and the followers had to put up with storm conditions. The previous September 61 was the famous Debbie, right. and Debbie was a disaster around the parish. It knocked trees that had lasted for a hundred years, and it knocked around Galway. But strangely enough, Galway and Tipperary played in a National League game in the Pier Stadium on, on, yeah, and Salmon put over three, Joe Salmon put Joe over Salmon, yeah. uh, three pints. But Joe Salmon took the freeze off the ground yeah. and he was able to slice them over the bar. And on that day, the 17th of September, 61, that game was played at the Pier Stadium. So we're going back a bit to 61, even though it was the day after Debbie, with disastrous results all over the country. The, the only recorded hurricane to date in September 61. So, my cousin on, on 5-2 and Father Tom Burks on 4-5 on finished level. That was the second day. So they were level again. The cup was not coming home yet. It was an amazing game. And without any question, the game of two halves. The proverbial game of two halves. My cousin had all their 5-2 in the first half. And Father Tom's didn't score. Uh, my Cullen didn't score in the second half, uh, and Father Tom scored four or five. Yeah. So we ended up in a draw. In the second game, my Cullen could not add to their account, and Father Tom scored four or five uh, to level matters. They could not be separated. The my Cullen scores came from Peter Keating. Peter got through for a goal. He had a, he had a unique style. Peter was swinging before the ball came within <laughs> 30 metres of him. The great Hubert Ferti from Clonaeve got in for a goal. John O'Connor scored. John normally played in the backs, but he moved forward, which wasn't rare at the time. You were told to stay back in your position. Tom McDonough got a goal. Went for a final. John Hanley was still playing. He got a goal. And the great Ty Kite, who was for many years a good friend of mine, That's right. he got in for a pint. And O'Malley added the other. And they were the scorers on the day. Seven scorers in one half hour of Hurland wasn't bad. That was fairly rare at the time if you look at the accounts. Yeah. To have seven scorers in a match. And again, Tommy was the, was the, the man to get the goal. <laughs> While John O'Connor usually lined out in defence, his move to attack was most important. That was given as, a, as an important thing. As he put fire into the Mike Cullen attack, we're informed. Now I don't know what else he put into the attack, but he put fire anyway. The city side were the title holders. They had won in 61, right? At the time, and they had some fine exponents of hurling craft. There were, Small was there, Tom Small. Yeah. There was Donald Killeen, Donald Killeen. God rest who was a referee, and God rest him, he was yeah. a referee for many years. Right. Donald was from Clare, the Clare man. And yeah, he was, was I think. And Seamus Cox. Right. Seamus was oh, yeah. a Galway football board man for many years and there was Shotnessy and there was a fellow called Diveny, Bernie Diveny and there was Duggan. There was Harkin, Barris, Willie Concannon was playing. He played with Mellows, That's right. he played with McLally in the 1970 county That's final. Right. There was Corbus, there was a fellow called Minahan and there was a man called Manus Duggan, Manus Duggan. who would be brother of Jimmy Duggan. Jimmy Duggan yeah. So that was the team. Now you're all interested in who lined out for my colour. There was a bit of a problem with the jerseys. <laughs> they ended up in the bag, there were only 13 jerseys. <laughs> but they got them. And they got out. So it shows, it didn't like all the hurlies you see on the pitch now, on the footballs, on the shitters. Things were tight. <laughs> 
you had to bring it up at the at the club meeting if you were going to buy two extra jerseys. Yeah. Because they'd always say, as your dad would often say, have you paid everyone? Yeah, that's right. Do you want to do anyone? Or are we in the red or are we in the black? Yes. <laughs> Good man, Morgan. Yeah. We're in the black, you. Continue. So, anyway, <laughs> the White Cullen team that lined out that day was in goal, the one and only Nicholas Dunno. Oh, yeah. Nicholas Dunno. In yeah. the corner back was a man called Georgine Richardson. Georgine, still around. Yeah. Still around. Yeah. Full back. Tommy's relation. Tommy's relation. Yeah. Full back was. Um, full back on that team was Michal Lally. The only man in my column with junior, intermediate and senior minutes. Yeah. The only man no. that ever has that honour. And on the other wing, at the young age, was Tommy Bohan. Tommy Bohan. Yeah. As we all hear you say, Tom Bohan. Tom Bohan, yeah. Right half back was another man, a dairy farmer, and a relation of Morgan, or a connection of Morgan, was Davy Maloney. Maloney. The one and only Davy Maloney. Centre half back, with number six on his back, was Tommy McDonald. Gio, that's right. And way over on the other wing was a man, the little man from Clyde, was Tim Kine. Tim Kine. God rest him. Lorna Parker, Sean Ollie John, who died in 1989, man, yeah. accompanied a man who died in 2005, Martin Mulcairn. Martin Mulcairn. In the half forward line on that day was John Connor. Yeah. Centre half forward, are we up there now, was, or up in the forward line anyway, on the centre half forward, and was Joanne Richardson. Joey was honoured no, a few no, years ago no, the he so passed away. Another relation to Tommy. A man that died, unfortunately, a few years later in April 1965 in an accident down near Lock Ray. Patrick Lydon. Lydon. That's right. Pat That's Lydon right. from Clonip. Full forward, John Hanley. Ray and in Hanley. there was, was Mark McDonough. And Tom, Theo's brother. Theo's brother. And Michael O'Malley, who had replaced Hugh Malloy just before the start. O'Malley made it in, Hugh Malai was, was injured or unavailable, Hugh was to play. He was the team captain and he performed very well as he snatched 2-1 in that final, Michael O'Malley did, including the late goal that won it. Yeah. Mark McDonough got a goal, Mark McCurran's got two pints, John Hanley a pint, and Joe Richardson got the other, were the other scorers. Who in a 3-5, I said that earlier, Christy Minahan got the two goals for for the other boys, Tom Corbis, Michael Barris, two pints, and a fellow called Jimmy Flaherty. Jimmy Flaherty got a pint for Father Tom's in a very exciting game, despite the atrocious conditions. Jojo Flaherty, Raymond Croke, and Tommy Burke were, were Tom Burke from Baladocha, were uh, team substitutes. Tommy was mainly associated with football. With John McDonough of Carden Moore as the referee. That's Johnny McDonough. He was the Westport treasurer That's for right. years. In it. John McDonough served on the Westport for many years as treasurer. And he was often at the gate for the big games in Carden Moore pitch. He was a regular there. It was hard That's to right. get in. Yeah. Hard to get in. You wouldn't get past him. James Heher. He was the Westport chairman. He presented the cup to the one and only Michael O'Malley. Amid scenes of great joy and great excitement. Remember they hadn't won for four years. They won in 58 and they hadn't won. So four years was... Yeah. He wished this fine team success in the county campaign over the following weeks. My column were, go, were growing in confidence. They had been doing very well. They had beaten Rahun and they had now beaten a good team like Father Tom's. And they were in the county semi-final. And they were to play Kinvara, who were good also at the time. Kinvara were the Southport champions. And they, Kinvara, Gart and those teams were very good in those years. Right. Uh, after another close encounter, my column had a two pints win over Kinvara. 3 4 to 2 5. An arrow up game. It was even closer in the first period with the defences on top. And at the interval in that game, my column led by just one pint. 1 2 to 1 1. You would never see a score like that again. Or if you do, the conditions are very bad. Or else the forwards are very erratic on that day. The important scores in that county semi-final came from O'Malley, 2-2. Two, two. You can see what a nippy right hand forward he was. He had the number 12 jersey actually. The number 12 jersey was his favourite jersey. It was on his coffin, sadly, when he died. That's right. Ray Croke got a goal and Mark McDonough yeah. was the other scorer against Ken Barra. Do you remember it, Tom? <laughs> you still remember it. Bobby Garner. 
Bobby from Bradford right. Rye, was the referee. Yeah. Kevin Sexton was a big star for the South Galway boys. He battled all the way. They even lodged an appeal to the county board. But it did not meet with any success. The Canberra does, not the Mike Cullen. Mike Cullen's victory was secure with, with guaranteed a first county appearance for the first time since 1958. As we said, we were talking about Gart. They are losing to Gart earlier. When the junior side lost out to Gart. The Mike Cullen side in the county semi-final, I don't know that it differ much from the other game, but we'll call it out with your, with your permission, Tom. Nicholas Donoghue, again, George Richardson, Mick Lally, Tom Bohan, Jojo jo Farty now had appeared yeah. there, Tommy Mark, Tommy McDonough, yeah. there, he protected them, he did. Tommy had this unique thing he told me one day in the Pierce Stadium, he said, are we losing? And this is true, because I was there on the pitch and I was, John Connor thought he'd make a hurler out of me, you know. He used to give me a jersey, he said, you're a fine man, but I don't know whether I'm much of a hurler. <laughs> but we were losing anyway to, in a dirty old match against Karen Moore. Right? And to the county semi final with the junior. And I was in cornerback and this man was full back. And he's are we losing to Tommy? And on a bad old day in the Pierce Stadium, whatever year that would be, Tommy. You were at the end of your career and I was at the beginning of my career. So I was a one sided hurler. Mainly a kit talk, which is unusual today. Yeah. You know, if you're a kit talk today they'd be giving you some words. They, they, would. they would. They would. But there was no such thing that time as a one sided hurler. There was very much a two-side hurdle because people swung both ways. Referees are very much on that now today. Yeah. But we're losing. So I said, said to Tommy, I think we were losing by about four points. I said, I think we're about ten down. You know, to make a sound that we needed to buckle up, you know. So Tommy said, could we ever start a little schmazzle? He said, we might get a replay. <laughs> I don't know did it work. I'm not sure did it work. And I the man that refereed that match, the poor man, is still alive out in Karen Moore. Not Tom Linehan now, but a, a good little man called Tom Hughes. Tom Hughes. Yeah. Tom was repping and I had the honour of being beside McDonough. Yeah. We're of the same generation. Yeah. Okay. So I was I'm 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 put on the wrong way as me on our could think to say. Where did I go wrong? But Jojo Ferty was on it and Tommy was on it. Joanne Richardson. Yeah. A lot of mercy on this. Mary McKerrins, Kine, and Sean Lydon, John Connor, O'Malley, Mark McDonough, John Hanley, and Pat Lydon, the man we said that yes, sadly died. Kinvara, for your interest, are you interested in Kinvara? PJ Curtin, P. Burton, a relation of Toddy Burton. Toddy Burton, yeah. He was a counsellor in time that I spent there myself. A fellow called Lenan. Hanley, Shotnessy, do you remember those names, Tom? Yes, yeah. Connell, Whelan, Kevin Sexton, Joey Mitchell, he was a good hurler. Right. He played for Galway for a while. Mahan, Connolly, Mick Curtin, that's Mick Curtin that played that's with right. New York, that's right. with Ken Croke, and he won three medals in New York with, with Kenneth Croke. Great hurler. 64 to 66. Leach, a relation of Alan Leach, who was, was on that, was captain of the team the year Ken Barra reached the final. And he's married to one of them Komogi players and fine looking women on the Galway team, Alan, Le Alan Leach. Ford and Connolly. Uh, Kinvara won the County Junior in 59, so they were quite good. And they had won the Intermediates, or they did win the Intermediate later on in 66. Now, we're in the County Final now, lads, right? For that year. And this is 62. We haven't come now to 63 yet, the year they won it. So, excitement was very high in the parish to be in a county final in 62, right? Remember now, Galway were gone into Munster. They were playing in Munster. And there weren't many games, because we, we, we only won one game ever in Munster. One game in all the, the ten years we were there. The only game we ever won was to beat Clare by a pint in the Pierce Stadium. So there wasn't great interest in hurling. But there was great interest in club hurling. A lot of people didn't want to play for Right, there were priests that at the time involved even, but that'd be a bit earlier, who were, were priests in my cullen but didn't really want to bring my cullen players. They left them on the side of the road on one occasion to go to a trial match. And I think Tommy will fill us in on that later on. Uh, they wanted certain people on the, on, the, on the team. They used to always say that, you know, if you had a good few Thurlock Morelads on the team, you'd draw the crowd. 
because there was always going to be a bit of a skirmish, yeah. a bit of a battle, particularly if you could match them up with the lads of Cashel at the time. Now Thurlock wasn't going hugely at that time. Thurlock hadn't won a county final except one until the 60s. Now they won the six in a row from 61 to 66, but they had only won one county final before that. That was 1956, when football was very strong in, in, in Galway. You know? That's right. It was the, the time that the terrible twins and that 56 against Cork, Purcell and, and Stockwell. Yeah. So anyway, we're in the county final, lads, and it's fixed for Kinney Park and Atten Roy. And Bobby Garner got the honour of being the, the man, the ref. He was one of the best was one of the best games played in the county for years. That's a reference to it in, in match reports. A great game, county junior final. The exchanges were close and no team deserved to lose. A draw would have been a very fair outcome, but was not to be. My cousin had a late chance, but they lost by a point. 4-7 to 4-6. It was hard to lose a county final after registering such a fine tally. 4-6 would have been a high score. Yes, that's right. A good yeah, score, a good four score. goals and six yeah, points, yeah. would have been a good score. At that and time. to be coming home with losing by a pint was bad. Right, only a few points separated the teams throughout. Kilimer Daly led 2-5 two, two, to 1-6 at half time, just the two points again. And my Cullen won the second half by three goals. My Cullen got in the second half to 2-2. Two, two. So goals weren't the thing. My Cullen received huge praise for their great efforts sportsmanship and how they accepted defeat. The scores on that occasion came from Hubert, 2-1. John Hanley, John Connor got a goal. Kevin Darcy, oh, two sorry. points. Sean Lyden, Martin Mulcairns was still there. Jack Whelan presented the cup to the Kilimer Daily captain. Oh, Jack. And he was a man that I met on a few occasions. A tough goal, goal not, not Jack Whelan, I never knew Jack Whelan, I knew but I knew a man that played for Galway for a number of years, Paddy, Paddy Mitchell, that's right, Paddy Mitchell. the great Paddy Mitchell, that's right. he was out, he'd, run for, he'd run for Ireland, <coughs> he'd keep oh, yeah. running all day, so he would, he played with, with the time Tommy Bohan was on the Galway team and that, and he was a county player for several years, and he got 2-2 two -two that day, Paddy Mitchell did. The Calimer Daily team had Errols of course in it, they had Errols, White, they had a fellow called Cannon, Noon, they had a fellow called Mitchell, they had a fellow called Conair, yeah. who was a brother of Fenton's. Fenton yeah. played for Galway, Fenton Conair, and they had a fellow called uh, uh, McGann's. These were good hurlers for, 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 I have the rest of them as well, but they're not of any big interest. A great hurling year had been come and gone. Football had done well as well, they had won a Westport in the football that year, and there was disappointment in 63, uh, but in the county semi final, Kilimer Daly had beaten Annie Down, who were good. They were the, Kilimer Daly beat Annie Down in their semi final by 13 to 2 9. Obviously, a lot of points there. So then we were on, we came the next year then, and we're on to the 63 team, which would be the 70 years from now, from now 70 yeah. years ago, the yeah. people that played in, in, so they're back again now in, in the thing. And the county final this time. We can leave out the lead up maybe to the Westport. We can do it some other time. But we might do a bit on the county final. Yeah. How they got on and who played. 